Howdy traders and investors, welcome to the crypto battle, uh, trading battle number 33, sponsored by ACAP Brokers. My name is Gary Fickard, known to many as the FX Big Dog on my YouTube channel. And you just have to search the name FX Big Dog and you will find me or go to tradersnetworkclub.com. Now, if you're watching this trade battle on YouTube, you have to subscribe to this channel. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel, but not only go ahead and subscribe to this channel, but make sure that you go ahead and click the notification bell as well and smash the like button below. Remember traders, we broadcast live trading battles every single week. And so if you want to be notified that we have a trade battle going on, you absolutely want to be subscribed to this channel. Now today we have two respected traders in this space. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the two challenges for today's trading battle number 33. So in the one corner, we have Midi Farog. Midi is a senior investment analyst at Tokens Metrics. He's currently helps, he currently helps research early stage altcoins, which I'm really excited about. And he's also studying his second master's in digital currencies and blockchain. Midi Great to have you here today. How are you doing? Thank you, and thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm great. Uh, markets are green, so that's always lovely to see. <laughs> you did. Yeah, I was going to say a bad word, but you're right. <laughs> you're right. It is good to see green on the markets. Now, now, Midi, you, you, you're also a cricket player, I believe. So, right, right? Do you play action cricket? Uh, what is action cricket? Like, I'm a cricket fan, though. Uh, so at the moment, I'm watching PSL. So shout out to PSL. So it's a, it's a domestic league in, in Pakistan. And I'm also very excited about Australia touring Pakistan in a few weeks' time. So looking forward to the action there. Fantastic. Well, action cricket, I come from South Africa, and what we did is we played cricket as well, and I was a fan of cricket, but the action, uh, action cricket was indoor, where you actually play indoor cricket in a smaller area, and it's a lot faster, quicker, it's really good. If you haven't played it, you've got to look so and research. So, so in, in Pakistan, we have an equivalent version of street cricket. So we go out on streets, it's like five, six overs, high pace, uh, high density, high intensity and we just play on the street with lights on with the tape ball so, so one of the reasons why we have good ballers is because we practice with the tape ball just trying to ball fast very cool very cool so a lot of broken win windows for cars and, and houses fantastic love it <laughs> all right well we have in the other corner we have bull noble bull hosted the uh, or host the daily shows for the token metrics tv he sees cryptos as an asset, uh, uh, sorry, as an asset class to analyze alongside other asset classes such as stocks, forex, and uh, metals. Bill has worked with J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman Sachs. He's well respected in this space as well. Bill, I'm really excited to hear about your strategy and how you use different assets to define trading opportunities. Welcome to the battle, uh, Bill. Hi, thanks for having me. Fantastic, Grant Tech. You, you, you ready for this battle? And you have a I'm, lot to share, I believe. I, I, I'm ready. How, how would you like to start? Uh, well, you know what? We, we are going to start with the first challenge. So let's go ahead and get that. Bill wants to get going with this challenge. Let's go ahead, Bill. So the first challenge for Bill and for Midi is this. Challenge number one is going to be Ape into the market challenge, which, by the way, uh, is called, also known as the LFG trade, which, by the way, my producer likes to call this, let's get this trade going. I'm not going to say the right word, but let's get this trade going. All right, so the LFG trade, that's going to be the first trade to take place. Now, Bill, I'm going to go, because you're excited about getting into this uh, first challenge, I'm going to go ahead and allow you to go ahead and start the challenge. All right, so let me get started here with the DeFi futures contract, okay? And here's why, you know, you're hearing a lot about inflation, right? So you hear, oh, um, you know, it, it, you, you could pick up a rock and see a bug and say, hey, have you heard inflation's a problem? And the bug would say yes. What people aren't talking about is what's the solution to the inflation, right? What's the solution? The solution is DeFi. Now, I know no one's talking about this in crypto right now, but everyone's like the Fed or the central banks have to solve it. No, the market has to solve it. And the way the market solves it is by moving money from the, the traditional system into DeFi. 
For example, Red Phone Crypto is like an anonymous crypto influencer. This guy thinks the start of the year that you could have total crypto market cap stay at 1 trillion. I'm sorry, at 2 trillion, but have the amount of money that's locked in DeFi go from 125 billion to 250 billion. So believe it or not, as destroyed as the market is, you know, I want to be long DeFi. Now I could give you more details, but I mean, that would be my, that, that would be my ape into the market trade. I think I just bought one DeFi contract. Okay. Is that what you've just gone here? Have you, have you just placed it right now? Is that the, the, the yeah, trade? Yes. I, yes. I believe so. Okay. Now, now Bill, just to, to, to take a step back right now, not just on the trade, but I know you do your daily, uh, the daily uh, shows as well, right? For token metrics. Uh, right. In your shows, is this the type of conversation you have in that show as well? Sure, sure. You no, know, as in the show, you know, we'll go through anywhere from 15 to 30 charts on like a PowerPoint deck, you know, where I'll come up with not just charts, but a cohesive narrative. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we'll do like Q&A on charts. So, you know, kind of like freestyle charting. Okay. And, and, and is a lot of your decisions making is based on charting with, of course, the news of, let's say, fundamentals and charting all put together to combine a sort of a, a trade idea? That's right. So I'm, I'm looking at a couple things, right? Charts, you know, and common sense, common sense macro, right? Mm -hmm. Something understandable. And then you put it together and you turn the numbers into a story because investing is about the story, right? So on the daily show and on this one, right, it's about like the story. So crypto's green today. Why? Well, because a war between, you know, like Putin and the West is yeah. in no one's, not only in no one's interest, but no one's capable of doing anything that they're talking about. So it's this giant worry trade for nothing. Right. And for example, right. like, like the Fed. Uh, you know, inflation's at seven and a half and rates are at zero. We know rates are going higher. Okay. When people stop the drama, maybe we can get back to sort of crypto trading. So that's an example of like a bottom line from a show. Hmm. All right. Really interesting. Okay. Well, great, great. Well, uh, well, traders uh, and, and, and viewers, uh, you know, strap down. Things are going to get real right now. So don't forget to subscribe, share and smash the like button. Bill gave us a great opportunity right now. His first trade is, uh, is, is already in. We're now going to give the opportunity to MIDI to be able to go ahead and counter that, uh, uh, that decision that Bill, Bill did. MIDI, how, do you, yeah. how are you doing and what you got for us, buddy? Yeah, so uh, personally, from a long-term perspective, I, I don't love DeFi at the current stage. So I, I know uh, to a certain degree for some of the people, DeFi trade will make sense. I'm not a big fan of uh, tokenomics with with regards to DeFi, uh, I'm actually going to go the opposite direction. So I'm seeing certain things in the market. So I'm, I'm going to quickly share my screen and show you what I am uh, kind of thinking about. Uh, so one thing I see is this is like a, a token metrics has this quant uh, grade over here. I, I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Yes, we can. Absolutely, we can. Right. Yep. Uh, so, so on on a daily basis, time horizon, we use a different algorithmic model. So, one of the coins that uh, the the AI basically picked out was Shiba Inu. Uh, so, it got me thinking. Uh, going from the macro perspective, we have Fed uh, uh, Fed FOMC minutes in in a couple of days. Uh, you see a lot of inflation number. But market at the moment is just ignoring all of this because everything with regards to inflation is priced in. And I am in the uh, I'm in the camp fundamentally that inflation will be transitory. So maybe it will last for a year, maybe it last for six months. I don't think it's going to be everlasting because at the end of the day, I feel technology is very deflationary. So the other day I had a guest, Dominic of Definity on my podcast, and he told me that they are trying to build cloud storage and the whole internet stack from scratch. And the cloud storage will be much cheaper than traditional Amazon cloud storage. So for me, this is another reason why I believe technology is so deflationary that the inflation we'll see from, let's say, oil price jump and, and economy opening up, I think will be transitory. And I think market is also kind of pricing that in. So if you look at uh, on, on, on my chart over here, trading economics, you see a lot of growth stocks are in red. 
Uh, you also see NASDAQ and S&P in green. And then if you go back to one of the risk assets for me, which is Bitcoin, uh, you kind of see your inverse head and shoulder pattern forming. Uh, so for me, uh, this is the neckline. This might break. And and if this neckline breaks, I think crypto is heading towards uh much more green because it took a lot of beating. So for me, the highest beta play uh, for short run would be Shiba Inu, uh, interestingly. Uh, Shiba Inu also has this inverse head and shoulder pattern on a one-day chart. So I would like to go long over here and and basically perhaps put 15% of, of my allocated portfolio for short term in this trade to get the highest beta exposure uh, to the riskiest asset there is. Because I feel like market is going to realize after the FOMC meeting that the inflation is transitory and, and, and Fed will kind of give mixed hawkish and dovish message. And I think the inflation is priced in. So based on all of these metrics and all of the, these things I see in the market, I would like to go at least for this trade, go long on Shiba. Oh, man, I love that trade. We just put a lot of money in Shiba. We've been talking about that myself, uh, me and uh, my fellow friend Cameron, talking about uh, Shiba. I love Shiba. And uh, just something interesting about your chart there, you call it a head and shoulders, although it took out the previous high. Do you not refer that to more of a king's crown than a head and shoulders? So I'll be honest, I'm more of a fundamental guy. Uh, so I'm, 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 going, I'm using technicals to kind of uh, fulfill my biases over here. But in the gotcha. short run, I, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I kind of see the inverse head and shoulder pattern and, at a one day chart. And okay. I also kind of see fundamental kind of straying in for here. Uh, and even if you look at the, like, I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Uh, let me kind of share my screen again. Yeah. One second. I definitely like I definitely like the rumor behind it. I like the noise behind it, and I like the fact that you've got something setting up technically that's that's connecting dots as well. So that looks good. I like it. So, so for for example, if I if I if I go long here, uh, and and I kind of like put my risk reward here. Let's say if if the if the risk is here, and and if it kind of runs up to uh, let's say next resistance, I think the risk reward is four, which is I think decent. Uh, yes. it, it can be even slightly higher. So, so from from that perspective, it makes sense. From fundamental perspective, it makes sense. And also, yeah. the quant is giving me that rating. Like quant is liking Shiba at the moment. So, I, I don't oh, want to yeah. go against the machine. Yeah. All right. Well, that's interesting. That's an interesting little uh, graph you got there as well. And where can the where can the viewers uh, find that? Is that available to everyone or? Uh, it's available to paid subscribers of Token Metrics. Okay. So we okay. have different subscription. Uh, one of the subscription, I think the basic version will also give you that that indicator. Okay, good. And, and do you use that a lot in your analysis uh, or is it just a, a confirmation if you need it? Uh, so let's say if I'm planning on my entry, uh, I, I'd use it because it, it, I think it's a good indicator of momentum and mean reversion. Uh, but from long-term perspective, uh, I, I wouldn't use it. I would just use it for entry. So if the, yeah. if the, uh, if, if the technicals make sense, if you're at a good, uh, good support or if, you are, uh, if you're breaking through and then the quant verifies it and there is a fundamental catalyst. Combining all of this, I'll just enter enter a position. Fantastic. Well, Media, I like that. It's very simple, uh, straightforward. I'm a very big technical trader too, and I've been doing that for 30 years. And I love it when you've got a clean chart, simple to understand. People can follow it very easily. So nicely done. Well done. So good. congrats on the uh, challenge number one that is now complete, both from Bill and from Media. Uh, I don't know if we have the uh, the uh, scoreboard up here. If we can put the scoreboard up, uh, we do. Let's take a look. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. Uh, so we got the scoreboard up. Uh, we don't have your trade in yet, Media. I don't see it up here yet. Have you placed that trade in yet? We've got Bill's trade in. Bill's got two trades already that he's gone. I think he's jumping the gun a little bit here, but we, <laughs> we're going to allow it for now. Uh, Media, do you have your trade up? You are muted, by the way, Midi. By the way, you are muted. Just uh, yeah, Shiba has a few more decimals, so I'm just trying to work out uh, the decimals over there. So this is very okay. <laughs> so he's getting real technical, making sure he gets the right entry. All right, fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and move on to challenge number two. Challenge number two is best altcoin right now. What is the best altcoin? Which altcoin do you think is ready to pump? Now uh, we know we're getting some green in the uh, in the uh, the market right now, and so there's a lot of altcoins that are giving us a lot of opportunity. But let's see our two challenges. They can select the two best, uh, or at least the best altcoins that they can go ahead and jump in right now. Bull, uh, Bull, 
I'm going to pass it back on to you, my friend. And I think I know who that. Uh, I, know, I think I know that elk coin. Uh, could it be mana? <laughs> okay. Well, I I I, I did mana. Uh, I wanted to make sure I could get in here so I didn't have any technical difficulties. Let me let me share my screen and bring up, you know, what what I was thinking on Decentraland. And I like that with all this, uh, with the, all of the NFTs coming up, gaming is becoming a big industry now at the moment right now. And so with the metaverse and all that good stuff, I know that Disney's on board right now. They're trying to challenge uh, the metaverse. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, but go ahead and share. Okay. So if you can see my screen right now, this is the work of Tom DeMarc as okay. applied to Decentraland. Okay. So one of the things that Tom DeMarc's work does is it allows you to get some sort of an idea about Elliott Wave without kind of the subjectivity that it gives you, right? So it may be hard to see, but you see this one up at the top? Yes, you do. Okay, that means the move off the lows was a one wave. And as you know, in Elliott, you wind up with five waves. Now, what you can see here near the two is you can see how they sort of liquidated everybody below that dotted line support. Another cool thing about the market is it draws a lot of horizontal support points, right, for you. So it takes the yeah. subjectivity out of that. So yeah. think about it. Up, down, right, liquidate everybody below support, and then start the three wave up. So I'm guessing, you know, with the central land up 15% today, I was working on this at 1 a.m. U.S. time tonight. I was like, oh, God, please hold off. But, of course, <laughs> bull markets always challenge you, right? So, you know, the fact that this has a lot more room to run to say 375, and actually I think they can take that out and go to 475. Now, part of the Decentraland thesis, right, even though this is pretty, pretty convoluted, as it, as it looks, there seems to be a lot of resistance in Sandbox. Let me see if I can clear at least some of this out. So it's not that I don't like Sandbox, but I'm just saying, you know what? I think I know why Decentraland is up as much as it is today, right? Because I'm wondering if it's under-owned, okay? Under-owned. So, you know, <clears throat> if you're going to do Metaverse, right? You've only got really two big cap choices. So that's part of what I'm thinking that, you know, if the next say week, you got to find something that's got a lot of room to run, particularly since I believe for the, for like the second half of February, like if you're going to make money in altcoins, it's either over the next two weeks or the next six weeks. So if something's up 10%, I know that, you know, it's not the best entry point, but I'm just going with it. You know what? I like that. And I, and uh, going back to the Elliott Wave structure that you have right here, uh, normally you have the, you're you correct. We have a five-wave structure, internal structure, and then what it does is it creates a larger wave, and then you have a correction move. Now, normally the correction move goes down to the fourth wave of the internal structure. So I see a little bit of movement. Do you not see any possible movement down south? And if so, let's say I'm right that there could be a little bit of a dip in that particular coin. Do you have a backup plan that you're going to go ahead and re-enter? Or do you, are you that type of trader that says, I'm entering here, I'm putting my stop here. If it doesn't work out, I'll then look for the next opportunity. Yeah, honestly, I think I'm just going to leave it for the next five days. And, and here's why, right? I, I think it, in a normal market, you would do exactly what you just said, right? In this case, you know, Decentraland was at three, okay? And it was as high as seven. Now, all it requires is somebody from like the decentral, a decentralized metaverse to get involved. Mm. Okay. So, like, for example, here you've got DeMarc based moving averages. So, DeMarc basically uses kind of smart moving averages, right? And that red moving average is climbing above the green one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. For me, that, that's an indication that even if you get a dip today, like the dip may be while we're talking or overnight. And I'm right. sure there'll be a 2% dip, but if you're going to hold it for five days, it's essentially a bet that you're going to get a 20% return. Yeah, yeah. And I can see how you're banking in on Sandbox as well as well as the Central Land because we had, uh, of course, the uh, uh, the weekend, we had the Super Bowl weekend, 
And if you notice Snoop Dogg, did you notice his uh, outfit? He's uh, promoting him. He's promoting 50 Cent. He's also promoting promoting the actual NFTs. So, uh, and, and again, he has something in Sandbox already. He owns land in Sandbox, uh, which is Snoop Dogg. So I think this is going to start taking off. I think you might be in a good position there. All right, all good right. stuff. Good call. Nice. I like it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and jump into uh, challenge number oh, – well, hold on a second. I, I didn't even give uh, challenge two to uh, Midi. My apologies, Midi. Uh, let's go ahead and swing it over to Midi. It's your, it's your chance to go ahead and choose the altcoin uh, right now. What is the best altcoin for you? Uh, so typically when, when, I, uh, when I select altcoins, like fundamentally I want to get into very, very early stage projects. Uh, so that gives me the best risk return. Uh, but that being said, I feel like a lot of layer ones are like the next FANG. So next Apple, next next Facebook, next uh, Microsoft. And these uh, layer ones will just accrue value over the period of time. So if yeah. somebody asks you, uh, like when you're making a decision in crypto, uh, for me, I, I keep things simple, uh, especially in public listed crypto. Uh, what is the investment thesis? A crypto that can exist five years down the line. And there are few, in my opinion, uh, that does the job really well. And one of them is actually pumping today. So I would like to just, uh, just share some of my thoughts uh, regarding that. So let me quickly share my screen. One second. Gala. Is it Gala? No, I, I think Gala is too overvalued. Uh, uh, it's it's, it's mm-hmm. a gaming metaverse project. The, it can pump uh, based on the trade. But one, one, one project which is at the moment doing really well is AVEX. Uh, but... T- technically speaking, I would say like in short run, you are kind of seeing this uh, trend line resistance over here. So ideally, I would like to accumulate at around 76. So you have this trend line, like uh, shorter duration, you have like a small trend line forming. Plus you also have uh, support from uh, support, support from previous levels as well. So I would like to enter here, but I know at the moment it has pumped up. Uh, it's at $90. Uh, so I will I will place a limit order around around this level around eighty dollars. Have a small stop order below it, and 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 try to make sure like if if, if the Fed comes out dovish uh, tomorrow, I think it can break this trend line support and just go higher. And I think the risk reward is also great. So let's say a, a tight uh, stop order over here and letting it fly all the way. So that's one of the coins I like that I think uh, I'm, I'm going to go long on. Uh, another one is near uh, near. Near is actually sitting, uh, in, fact, in fact, like I wanted to enter over here, uh, but it has pumped up a bit. It's around $11. But again, I think accumulating around $10, $10.50 could be interesting over here. It can, uh, in my opinion, it's also very undervalued. Uh, the reason is it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically what Ethereum 2.0 will be, but it's already existing now. So it has that advantage. The valuations are also very cheap. So for me, this is another coin that I really like. And and fi- and, and there are other ones as well. Like you, I also like Luna. I also like Atom. I also like uh, Chainlink. But if I were to enter my position, I will just uh, just go long in those two. Uh, so whatever amount I have left from uh, after investing on Shiba, I'll, I'll basically place it, place it on. Uh, in these two and basically depending on the technicals have my stop order place uh and 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 let the trade fly so let me get i, I didn't i can't see the actual uh what was that uh, the the what coin was that uh i can't read uh, near 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 protocol one is near and one is okay. avalanche uh so with regards to avalanche I, i'll also share one more thing let me quickly go go on the website over here so i did a 100x uh, 100x podcast with the co-founder so if you listen if you listen to the co-founder uh, you will also get bullish he was able to explain his vision uh, very succinctly and he was brilliant like he he basically convinced me that this is the next polkadot so if you go on token metrics youtube this is one of the podcasts i have for you yes uh, and, and in terms of in terms of catalyst if you go on his profile Basically, one of the catalysts he shows is that the TVL in, in, in crypto TVL is how much value is locked in a, in, in, in a project. So mm-hmm. Avalanche after Ethereum has the most TVL locked. Uh, the graph is uh, small over here, but they w- w- what this graph is showing you is that they recently overtook Binance Smart Chain. So, so the TVL is growing and it's growing organically. There is a network effect and the project has something similar to a Polkadot. 
And Polkadot, we know that it never arrived. But Avalanche is here, and there are a few sure. catalysts. One, one is the TVL, and the other one is uh, um, the subnets, which is very similar to Polkadot. Now, I know, I understand these things might not migrate, like might not happen in uh, next five days, next seven days. But this is one of the trades that even if there was a crypto winter, I would still hold my Avalanche, I would still hold my Near, and I'll, I'll go long on them. So it just makes sense for me in terms of comf- comfortability to just enter, en- enter this trade. So, so Midi, do you, do you, you have a belief that the market, uh, when the market uh, rallies, we have correction. The market rallies, we have correction, right? The market waves, correct, right? Yes. So, because I looked at your, 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 your structure there as well. So if you look at, uh, if you look at Avalanche, uh, Avalanche has actually pumped over the last uh, uh, 24 hours. It's gone 12.9% up. So we've, we've seen a move over the last 24 hours about 12%. And yes. uh, in, the week, in the week, we've actually gone 8% up in the week over the last seven days. Do you feel like getting in right now, the market may go into a correction before the go ahead and continue its rally and that you're not going to get the full benefit of this move in the next five days? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think that is true. That that could potentially happen. But the way I'm kind of seeing is that the way the whole trade setup is, I feel inflation is transitory. I think the Fed FOMC meeting uh, will have kind of like a dovish hawkish stance. I, I think Avalanche took a lot of beating. So it's just undervalued, like from a fundamental perspective, undervalued. And again, I, I don't know how the market will do. But if the market rallies, I think it will outperform ETH. So one of the th- one of the trades I would ideally do which could be complex, is do like a relative trade where I go long avalanche and short Ethereum to kind of capture that spread if the market rallies. Uh, but then again, the risk with that trade is since we have like a mixed up Fed, if Fed is on a slightly more hawkish side, then we might see uh, basically ETH dumping and avalanche dumping simultaneously and the trade will go against me. So that's mm. that's one of the reasons why I, I don't want to place the relative trade to kind of capture the basis. Uh, I just want to go long avalanche because even if the trade doesn't uh, go in, go in favor, like at, uh, I, I'll have a tight, tight stop order. But it, like from a swing trade perspective, from long term perspective, it's one of those coins that I personally like. So if, if the leverage was smaller, I would just hold it. Are you going to be watching the Fed's uh, meeting, uh, meeting minutes taking place tomorrow at 2, uh, 2 p.m.? Uh, yes, because I have some trades on. But if if, if, if I didn't have trades on, uh, I, I wouldn't watch because I think the crypto space has so many exciting things happening. Yeah. Uh, rather yeah. rather have my attention there. But since I have a trade on, uh, I have yeah. to be diligent. Fantastic. Well, Midi, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your, uh, your insight on that. It certainly is uh, powerful stuff that I- I'm sure a lot of the guys, a lot of the viewers are uh, actually paying a lot more attention to this. So let's go ahead and pass it on back to uh, our uh, fellow competitor, Bill. Bill, you've got challenge number three coming up, which is the top crypto pick for the week ahead. Uh, which crypto do you see could be the uh, uh, possible start? And it could be a crypto that you could possibly see that you can start building up. Remember, this is a five-day or a seven-day trade, so which means that you don't necessarily have to say, I'm just going to enter here. You could have multiple entry points to build up that position to get the maximum out of the move in the next seven days. What, do you, what is that currency going to be? Oh, so the crypto, sorry. <laughs> All right, let me, uh, let, let me pull this up. Okay, sure. the, the currency is going to be per. Uh, you say currency now. I, 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 it's crypto. I got you on the wrong foot there. It's crypto. <laughs> right, it's crypto. Sorry. So the digital asset that, that I'm looking at is, yes. is PERP, right? PERP is a derivatives exchange, and it's a decentralized derivatives exchange. All right, so I'm going to pull up why I think PERP is an idea that can survive the Fed, because that's really the question here, right? Can we do a trade <laughs> and not and and not and not get killed? All right. Yeah. So here here is the Demarc work on perp. So the thirteens it comes from TD sequential. It's essentially a quant based system that counts a set of conditions. When those conditions appear for the thirteenth time, it's a signal you should be aware that a bottom could occur. Mm-hmm. Naturally, because it's crypto. Okay, perp does this dramatic overshoot, which can happen. So you get the signal to watch for a bottom, and then you get this huge avalanche lower, right? Followed by some sort of consolidation. You know, now it could be a base, right? I have this saying, like, the bigger the base, the higher in the space. So with PERP, (laughs) 
I'm not, I'm not seeing a lot of resistance until say 770. Now purple is actually higher on the day, right? And it's actually coming off as we're talking along with the rest of the market. So like, you know, DeFi and, you know, Decentraland, that those are kind of my high beta plays. My lower beta play, hoping for a surprise. Now, what's the, what's the surprise with PERP? The surprise, okay, is that speculation, derivatives trading would return to the market. Now, I know Medi, Medi does all kinds of work. We're looking at small altcoins for structured products, okay? But PERP is one of the plays that, you know, we've got on our list today. Now, one thing I want to know. So, obviously, as you can see here, You've got some really, uh, some not good candles, right? You can tell right. that that bag holders, that people who got caught on the way down, because I mean, this was brutal, right? The, these, this down trade here was unbelievable. So here's my thesis. You know, even though PERP right now is rolling over, this is an 89 minute chart. So maybe I'll label this for, for, for people who watch the recording. This 89 minute chart, by the way, 89 minutes comes from like GAN mathematics. You I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, GAN is famous for numbers. Like you've heard of 45 degree angles, you yeah. know, uh, 89 is one of GAN's favorite numbers. I got it from a guy who was actually, he gave me my first chart book when I was an intern at JP Morgan, uh, in the summer of 1990 when Iraq invaded Kuwait. So. That's when I discovered technical analysis way back when. So I got the 89 minute chart idea from him. So again, with perp, you know, looking at this stochastic situation, just letting this kind of like relieve itself now and over the say the next couple of days. And I'm hoping that once the Fed's done, you know, the desire to speculate will come back to the markets. All right. So, you know, and if you go back to looking at this, I'm just looking to invest in something where you've got a bottom like the DeMarc 13s and you don't have a lot in the way until it's higher. So the right. cool thing about DeMarc is, you know, it, do it does some of the work for you. Sure. Absolutely. Now you've got a really good picture going here. You've got that, that uh, grade out. Uh, it looks like a, a, a film from uh, uh, the, the 60s, you know, with the grade. <laughs> Well done. And you've given away your age, by the way, when you start talking about the 90s and so on. I'm just saying. Right. I'm just going to lay well, it out there. No, no, I understand. Uh, you know, there, <laughs> there is demand on token metrics live streams uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for war stories. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I, I, did a, I did a presentation to a crypto class at the University of Houston. And, you know, I did all this, you know, layer ones and I did all this stuff. And at the end... I asked, uh, who wants to learn more about Ethereum? And I got like five hands. I asked a couple more questions. And the last question I asked is, who wants to hear like Wall Street war stories from when I worked in Legacy? And every hand went up. <laughs> so I know I'm coming in in black and white today. I can assure you that that's not on purpose, even though I think my token metrics cap is still yellow. But uh, so yes, uh, I'm over the age of 30 and I've seen a few things. Uh, it's well, actually a rent... Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say we had uh, we had uh, Nick Leeson on the uh, show uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, uh, he's known as the uh, the rogue trader, as you probably know as well. And uh, it was interesting listening to his stories. So I can I can contest that listening to these uh, war stories about Wall Street is absolutely awesome, man. All right. Well, uh, you know, I, I I made I made a name at Goldman for being able to trade. You know actually provide analysis to traders in highly volatile markets, right? So I, I'm perfectly suited for crypto or so we would hope. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. 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 Well, that's great. That's great. All right. Well, perfect. Well, we've got the, uh, the challenge of the, uh, the challenge number three that is up for uh, bill. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scoreboard right now, before we go ahead and move it over to media again. Uh, scoreboard looks like, uh, we have, uh, a few trades in and uh, woo, Shiba's going down. Uh, all right, so Midi, you got your Shiba trade in. Uh, looked like you loaded the bus on that baby. Um, and then we've got some more trades going in with uh, uh, Bill right now. 
Uh, right now, Bill is leading uh, based on the, uh, the draw that we're currently in. But remember, it's early stages, viewers. Early stages. This could turn in a flash. So we're going to go ahead and move it over to Midi. Midi, you've got the opportunity to jump into ch uh, challenge number three. What have you got for the viewers? Yeah, so in terms of my top uh, top crypto v, uh, crypto pick, I just mentioned AVAX. I like AVAX. So, uh, so at the end of the day, you want good projects at good entry price. So I, I know that this is one thing AVAX has pumped. At, it's $90. So I'm just going to be patient. I'm going to share my screen, just like show my thought process on how I'm uh, pl placing the AVAX trade. One second. Okay. Uh, so yeah, because so, that's great. Because I was going to say we, we don't have AVAX in there already, so you haven't put that in yet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have put a limit order, so limit okay. order around eighty-one dollars. Uh, okay. So if it if it goes to eighty-one dollars for whatever reason, uh, I like it. Now there are few reasons. Uh, there are few reasons for that. Let me let me show you. So as I said earlier, you have strong support at seventy-six. So if it goes to eighty-one. If it's if it tries to test that support, uh, I get that exposure. Then you have trend line support around around that level. So just just waiting for a pullback. And once that pullback happens, I think eighty one dollar mark would be something I'll be comfortable in entering. And then I can have my stop order uh, below that. Now uh, another thing I can do is I can look for a breakout above ninety five. So that's another level I'm I'm looking at. So if this doesn't go through, if if it kind of breaks this short short term trend line resistance. I can basically place an order, uh, basically do a breakout trade around around ninety five dollar. If this happens, more likely than not, uh, Fed Fed is dovish. I'm also looking at near. I'm uh, I'm also thinking about entering a trade over here around around um, ten fifty mark. Just just place an order over here and and basically diversify my portfolio between AVAX and near. Uh, again, the fundamentals are great for this project. Uh, if 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 it was in five days, if, even if it was like one year, two year, I would be comfortable holding uh, holding these two positions. So I have that comfort level uh, with, with these coins. And also, there are not many catalysts are going for them. A negative catalyst, the only positive catalyst. So if in next couple of days, especially on AVAX side, if there's a news of new blockchain being developed through the subnet, it could easily break through the hundred dollar psychological mark and then maybe even test 140 130 who knows uh so 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 that's the setup i have going long on avax in here uh for the week but there are other other coins as well like you, you can see like atom if somebody wants to think about going long on atom uh, it's it's another project i like uh, fundamentally ling is also good fundamentally uh luna is also one project i like fundamentally the only thing I'm a bit scared about for Luna is that if uh, Fed is hawkish, this is a very high beta play and there will be a pressure on UST and Luna has a direct relationship with UST. So that's the only reason fundamentally I, I, I'm not comfortable with from a, a short term perspective. So that's the that's the reason why I've chose AVEX in here, not Luna. But Atom and Link would have been my third and fourth pick, at least from a fundamental standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we did have a, a question here from one of the students that posted, or some of the viewers that posted over here and said, if Bitcoin goes on a run and the dominance chart also goes on a run, uh, we're then then the altcoins won't run. Now, I do believe that there are going to be some altcoins, and that's why AVX and, and, and Avalanche and certain other cryptos, are, oh, sorry, altcoins, are actually going to run through that period because we've seen that over the past, right? We've seen that even though we've, uh, we've seen Bitcoin and Ethereum run in a certain direction, we do see some altcoins either started to dip, waiting, and then when Ethereum Bitcoin stopped dropping, we see sort of like a, a shift of safe haven in, in the altcoin in, in the altcoin itself. So um, so I like that call on the on, on Avalanche. I like that call. Now, let me just make sure here. Um, you've got uh, a Shiba. Uh, your Shiba was your first challenge. What was the second trade that you took on your second challenge? Uh, so, so for even for the second trade and this one, I, I just want to go long avalanche in here because of the fundamental backdrop. Okay, so you're not going to enter in three trades. You're entering just the two. So, but, uh, challenge one and two, sorry, two and three are going to be the same, uh, same one, yes. right? Yes. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Well, you know what? If uh, um, and you've got a limit, uh, limit entry at the moment right now, which means we're not there yet. Yes. Yes, okay. we're not there yet. Right. I'm going to be monitoring the market as well. Like, like let's see how it goes. If it re, if if I kind of see more uh, buying pressure, and if it reaches like 94, 95, I might uh, remove that and might enter a breakout trade uh, for okay. average. Okay, good. 
Well, good. Well, well, that's the three challenges that we've got here for you, for the viewers today. But I'm going to go ahead and extend the conversation a little bit more to both. If we can have both Bill and uh, Midi up here, and so we can go ahead and have this conversation. So, so just a question for both of you because you you're both contributing towards uh, the um, uh, uh, token metrics. Uh, when you go when you go ahead and do what you do for the for the for the company, uh, what is it that you that you 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 provide in? I know that uh, Bill, you do the daily uh, the daily TV show. I know that uh, um, Medi does the uh, the research and provides the research. Do you guys work together hand in hand and provide each other with information and and sort of like uh, communicate uh, the decision making on that? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So. You know, I many may, may not know this, but you know, I I love having a guy, a fund many and his group. They're like it's like a fundamental an analysis department at an investment bank, except it's obviously a group of guys. That's what makes token metrics cool. Yeah. So if many has you know, if many tells me, you know, hey, there's something different about Avalanche. Uh, you know, if you pop the hood and look at the blockchain, and then you know, I had chart work at the same time that showed, you know, Avalanche could lead the entire market. A lot of people don't know this, but, you know, ETH did something in 2017 where it went from 100 to 1,000. Now, I don't, I don't want to be crazy, but that occurred to me as soon as I heard Medi's research. So, yeah, we definitely coordinate, and, you know, it makes reading charts and telling stories a lot easier because I got Medi around. Yes, yes, it does. Yeah, and, and, and why I'm asking that question is because uh, Cameron, uh, Cam I brought Cameron into my company called the Traders Network Club, and, and partly what he does, he does the research like Medi does. He goes in and he does the research because it takes a lot of time. Medi, you can confess, right, the time that you have to spend on, on watching uh, different channels, uh, looking at his, his biggest uh, feed is, of course, uh, Twitter. Picking up and following the big guys and listening to all of the, the stuff that's going on, following the, the blockchain, and then also at the same time getting into the discords, pulling out information. So it takes a lot of work. So I've got a lot of respect for you and Cameron that uh, that go through that sort of, uh, you know, uh, trend, go through the trenches and find the information that's important to be able to pick up on this. I mean, I spoke about Gala. You know, Gala, we spoke about that two weeks. We said there's a, big, there's a rally expected in Gala. It rallied up over 100% over the last two weeks. But those are the type of picks that, Mehdi, you, you, you're good at, right? You, you pass that information over to Bill and his teams. Yeah, there the are two things I do. So one thing is speaking to different entrepreneurs and trying to see what trends are next. So, for example, at the moment, I'm talking to a lot of VCs, a lot of early stage, like uh, a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are building projects that will get listed in, let's say, six months to one year time. So speaking to these entrepreneurs, even before, uh, basically, when they're making the project, you you typically get a good sense of what's, what's next in the market. So... Uh, for example, when the gaming project in Metaverse boom was happening, I could convey to Bill that, you know what, a lot of entrepreneurs are getting into this space and the valuation they're asking for is huge. So that could be a, sometimes an indicator for public market rally and, and sometimes the other way around. So at the moment, I'm within early stage investment with different entrepreneurs. A lot of entrepreneurs are working with uh, zero knowledge proof. So a lot of projects in the public market, which are in, encapsulating this technology, will typically do well because uh, a lot of investors have, have seen this trend. And sometimes private markets are earlier than public markets. So that's one, one value add I do. The, an, another value add I, uh, I provide is from a long-term perspective is the valuation. So in, in short-run market can be irrational. Price can go up, price can go down. There are technicals, there are volume, there are different players out there. But eventually, uh, you also have to respect valuation. Uh, so value, if, 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 for example, with the with, with case of Gala, I personally feel the valuation is too high. So for me, I would rather go long on... Uh, Mana or Sandbox or one of the picks I have is Somnium Space. So the ticker is Q. So for me, those kind of make sense from valuation perspective. So valuation, picking out the trends early, speaking with entrepreneurs and, and, and trying to catch the trade early. And then Bill can help me out with some of the technicals, see, seeing the psychology of the market. And when we infuse these together, a lot of our subscribers tend to love that. 
fantastic and that, that's that's real interesting and i think viewers must really appreciate the type of work and in, insight that uh, that both bill and midi bring to the table because it's it takes a lot of work to really get this information and that's why it's so important to follow these type of experts because they do all the homework they do all the research and they are connected with the right people and uh, you know, I'm going to get Cameron connected to media because I think they can really contribute to you for each other when it comes to um, this type of information. So this is great networking, getting involved in this type of stuff is great. I guess I have a question for both of you. I don't know which one can answer this question. Maybe more media as well on this one. But does NFTs uh, when they're going to be dropping NFTs? And I know Cameron's really focused on that. When they drop in NFTs, it does influence a lot of the crypto, the, the, the crypto moves that we've seen. And when they, we get these big uh, big drops on these main main cryptos, does that something is that something that you guys keep an eye open for as well? Of course. Uh, so with Solana, one thing we are keeping an eye on is that uh, OpenSea might integrate. So OpenSea is the biggest uh, platform for yes, people to buy and sell buy and sell NFTs. So if OpenSea kind of gives a thumbs up for Solana and their NFTs, Solana NFT space will basically explode. So a lot of people will mint Solana. There will be network effect. Users will joining in. There will be unique uh, addresses going up. There will be more uh, value that will be locked. So one one way to kind of do an index play on whole NFT sector will just will be just to buy Solana or maybe mm. one of the one of the NFT marketplaces in Solana. Now I, I do feel like it, it's art. It's a, it's a very difficult art to kind of pick single NFT like a single profile picture that will do well. Uh, I, I am I'm not that good at. I'll be honest. Like, it's very difficult for me uh, to to catch one single NFT, and I think we're too early to make concentrated bets. So the way I kind of sometimes play the NFT space is to get an index level exposure, and I typically tend to get index level exposure through layer ones. So layer ones such as AVAX, near. One thing just to add on uh, uh, NFT, yeah. the, one of the trades I, I like is near. And one of the reasons I like that trade is because I think NF, uh, near NFT ecosystem is very nascent and I think it's just ready to explode. The whole blockchain architecture is basically built for gaming and NFTs. Uh, so one thing the market, in my opinion, is not typically giving credit to near is how good the blockchain is for uh, NFTs and gaming. So Solana will do well, Ethereum will do well, but near could be the incumbent that basically also uh, in a few, like, few months time uh, starts to take their market share. Sure, sure, great, fantastic. And Bill, I got a question for you about uh, about Solana and uh, Ethereum. There's been a lot of chatter about Ethereum possibly being uh, the, the 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 mistake of crypto, which means that so, uh, Ethereum was the first in, the first to go ahead and create these uh, smart contracts, and and uh, but then we've got Solana, we've got uh, uh, Cardano. That are uh, leading behind, but they were, what they're doing is they're they're doing everything what uh, Ethereum did wrong. So everything, all the mistakes that they made, they have got a, a totally different start. There's chatter about that Solana or even Cardano could be, uh, you know, taking over what uh, Ethereum started off. Is it possible? Yes, I I think a couple things are possible in the layer one world, right? I I don't think there's going to be one layer one that's champion. You know, there's more than one way to get into New York City, you know, tunnels, bridges, turnpikes, highways. I think there's going to be more than one way to access the future of finance and art. Now that said, um, everyone wants to kill Ethereum. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, gas fees are a payment to be on the network. So think about going to Las Vegas. I mean, yeah. Do you want to stay in a cheap hotel or do you want to stay in a nice one? Ethereum, in my mind, is the really nice hotel because it's got the nicest network. Mm -hmm. Now, Solana, Solana is probably being held back by the fact that venture capitalists have, frankly, they have huge bags. So there's going to be this extensive consolidation period for Solana, right? Which will allow probably Avalanche to take off as many expected. Sure. Right? sure. Now, Cardano, sure. Uh, you know, Cardano's funny, right? One minute it's changing the world and it's the number three crypto. And now no one is talking about it. Yeah. So I like Cardano now because no one's talking about it. Right. And one day, perhaps say six, seven months from now, it'll probably be time for Solana again. 
Yeah, yeah. I see Cardano is actually uh, rated number seven right now. It's down eight percent to almost nine percent for the week. For the week, uh, it had a rally over the last twenty four hours, four point five, four point seven percent. Uh, but then Solana, Solana has been down 13% in the week. So we've had a little bit of a, an increase over the last uh, 24 hours to 6%. So there's definitely a battle between the two on 6 and 7 position right here. So, um, oh, sorry, actually 7 and 8 position. So it's pretty interesting how their market cap is changing. Um, well, that's great. That's fantastic. Great conversation, guys. A really great conversation. Now, uh, let's go take a, quickly, uh, a quick review of the uh, scorecard uh, as we go ahead and finish off over here. Uh, looks like no changes to uh, the uh, Shiba trade, uh, still down. Uh, let's take a look at the other trades on Bulls. Bulls trades is also there. Bull currently is leading. Again, this could change over the next five days. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. And there, uh, there will be a winner at the end of the uh, the, the week. So uh, we'll keep those trades going, guys. And we'll see how that plays out and see uh, uh, who is the, uh, the champion of this battle. And we'll go ahead and announce that. Now, before we go, uh, Bill, I'd like to go ahead and give you the opportunity to just give uh, the, the viewers a little bit of information about how they can get in touch with you or follow you and learn a little bit more what you do in your trading style. And also, if you can do me a favor as well, share some information about your charity of choice that you've chosen so that all the profits that you've generated from this battle will be going to your charity of choice. Go ahead and share on, on that as well. All right. So my charity of choice is for St. Jude's. It's Children's Cancer Research. So I, I saw actually a lot of commercials on American football games because I, I, I'm sure COVID-19, you know, has sucked up a lot of research dollars. Uh, so, you know, kids with cancer is, is obviously, you know, I, I'm a parent. So I, I feel for those kids. Sure. So that's St. Jude. Uh, in terms of where you can get in touch with us, you know, it's crypto underscore noble, all right, on Twitter. Right. And tokenmetrics.com, right, for us. And, you know, if I may, you know, for the trading battle and Valentine's Day, we're running a 30% off coupon, Love30, right? So if you want AI plus the type of human analytics that we're doing, you know, come visit us at tokenmetrics.com. Fantastic. Now, I had my 29th, uh, 29th year anniversary with my wife uh, the day before uh, Valentine's. Do I get a bit of discount? Do I get a huge discount? Uh, well, you, you, you can get the 30% discount until the 21st. So we, <laughs> gave you, uh, we, we, we gave you and your Valentine some time to get in on token metrics because remember, you know, you, you have that big banner behind you. It's, it's alt season. My PowerPoint for today was called alt reason. So there's a lot of reasons to get involved now. Absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with you there. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Bill. Thank you. Appreciate that. And Midi, do you want to go ahead and add something different? I know that you're both at uh, Token Metrics. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just uh, mention uh, the charity I've selected. I've selected Al Khan Foundation. So I'm from Pakistan. I've seen them work uh, close-handedly. Uh, they, they work on food security. They work on education, poverty. And, and the charity with regards to Aga Khan Foundation is that they want to help not just Pakistan, for example, all the emerging markets uh, and all the emerging countries out there. So Nigeria and so and so forth. Uh, and, and their focus is really on education and poverty. So for, for, for me, this is something which is very close to my heart. And that's the reason why I uh, I selected this charity. Uh, secondly, I uh, if, if you guys... Um, are interested in early stage tokens if you guys are interested in ICOs, IDOs and if if you want quantitative analysis, technical analysis and also valuation of these ICOs and IDOs uh, I, I think you should subscribe to Token Metrics. We have deep dive reports for our exclusive customer. We have a we have a Telegram group where you can network with fellow investors who also appreciate early stage tokens and then you also have uh, TV shows regarding these um, uh, these coins. Going forward, we are also hiring. So we'll have sector specialists for all of these early stage tokens. So we, we have a DeFi sector analyst, Web3 sector analyst, NFT, gaming, metaverse, layer one, and all of these analysts uh, kind of provide you the brain power so you don't have to go into Discord and Telegram and find 100x, 50x kind of opportunities out there. So uh, definitely uh, worth subscribing to Token Metrics and, worth, and it's also worth uh, reading our research for that matter. Fantastic. 
Well, that's a lot of a lot, a lot. So, Mindy, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for your, uh, your charity of choice as well. Thank you for sharing that as well. Fantastic. Well, viewers, I hope you get a great time. Now, before we, get, uh, before we go ahead and uh, uh, leave you, let me go ahead and thank Bill and Mindy, and thanks a lot for uh, the information that you shared with everyone. It's been absolutely awesome. I've learned a little bit as well, and I do appreciate that, and I know that the viewers have learned a lot. So that is great, and that's exactly what these shows are all about, is just sharing information and get everyone, get everyone educated about the new things that are happening in the market. Now, before we say goodbye, like I said, uh, I'd like to go here and thank the sponsors, ACAP Brokers. And as a show of thanks, I want to go ahead and make sure that everyone in this channel right now, everyone watching, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, share this video, and smash the like button like nobody's business, all right? Smash the like button. Let's get this video out to as many traders as possible and share the love. With that being said, I'm Gary Fickard, wishing you joy, success, and lots of profits. Until next time, happy trading, my friends.